Hi, my name is Professor Matthew Nichols, and today I'm going to be talking you through the basics of tambourine and triangle technique. Now, these techniques are really important because no matter how small the part is, making sure that you play these instruments properly will ensure that your director's happy and that you produce the best sound possible. So we'll start today with the tambourine. Tambourine is a, an instrument that has a very long, interesting history, but the modern tambourines today have a wooden hoop with the skin stretched atop. That skin can be made of natural skin, such as goat or calf skin, and there also could be a synthetic option, which is um, for people who choose not to use natural skin or for people who live in areas where um, the humidity changes, the climate changes rapidly, and so you need something that isn't as affected by the elements. So this instrument I have in front of me is a natural skin head. They have jingles on the sides. Sometimes you have two rows, sometimes you have one row. Sometimes they're stacked on top of each other. Sometimes they're um, created where they're alternating in areas on the tambourine. This one has a lot of coverage because of that alternating pattern. And then there's a little position usually um, centered around the logo. It doesn't really matter. Um, but there will at least be one gap on your tambourine. Um, sometimes with the hole, uh, other instruments don't have the hole. Um, this is where we'll hold the instrument. This is our holding place. Otherwise, if we hold anywhere else, you're going to dampen some of the jingles. These jingles can be made of many different metals. Ultimately, it's just about what instrument you have available, or if you're ordering an instrument, what is your preference as far as the sound that you're looking for. Now, something that most people will do with their tambourines, just to make sure that it has the most focused sound, is they'll add some sort of dampening on the inside of the head. On this one, I just have a napkin, uh, a cloth napkin that I've cut into a circle and I've taped it down with masking tape. You can use whatever. Some people use moleskin, some people use tablecloth, some people will use felt. It's really your preference. Now beyond that, another thing that I like to do to prepare my tambourine is to create a surface that has more friction on it. And that's going to be done with beeswax. So you can buy beeswax from a local honey store, or you can go online. All these different tambourine manufacturers have their own beeswax you can purchase. But I used that, and I scraped it onto the head so that it would create some sort of resistance when I go to play. And if I want to play something like a finger roll or a thumb roll, I can do so without having to worry about wetting uh, my fingertips or doing something that would cause the instrument... Um, to for my finger to slip across without getting any sort of friction. So it's beeswax. I've got a cloth on the inside. And other than that, I think we're good to go. So when we hold the instrument, we want to use our non-dominant hand. For me, I'm right-handed. So I use my non-dominant, my left hand. And I will hold the instrument in this designated area. I don't need to use the hole for anything. I don't put my thumb through. I don't put my finger through. Um, it's just there uh, partly as uh, an artifact or a decoration. You can also use this if you have to mount a tambourine. You can mount it to a cymbal stand through there. But other than that, we're just going to leave it alone. I'm going to wrap my fingers around. Some people can wrap their hands around and make contact with their back fingers on the head while their thumb rests on top. It's really up to you as far as your preference. But the idea is I want to hold the tambourine so that I have a straight line from my elbow to the opposite end of the tambourine. I don't want to hold it where my wrist is bent one way or another. I want to be as relaxed as possible with a straight line going from my elbow to the end of the tambourine. Now, when I go to play with this hand, I want to focus the sound like a mallet hitting a drum or a drumstick hitting a drum. And so instead of just kind of whole hand, just whatever you want to do, I'm going to focus that sound. And so I like to think about the duck beak so I take all my fingers and bring them to a point, and then I use that point when I play the instrument. Now I want to encourage you to keep things relaxed and loose. We don't want to use so much arm or excess motion that we get tired or fatigued early. But I want to utilize a relaxed motion. I'll use a little bit of wrist when I play, and I'll keep my fingers at a point. Now there are times where I need to play softer, and I'll actually take some fingers away. 
And I'll also just use a finger or I'll tap lightly on the edge to get a softer sound with my hand resting on the instrument. Those are more specialty moments. My general purpose playing is with the duck beak. Now, if I want to play louder, one loud note, the final note of the piece, whatever, I will knock on the door as far as using my fist. I don't need to punch the instrument. I don't want to hit it the wrong direction. Instead, what I'll do is I'll knock on the door. And when I knock on the door, that sound is a really punchy sound. Another option could be an open hand palm to the center of the drum. It creates a really popping, sharp sound. Again, fingertips knocking on the door are going to be the outliers as far as the really loud or really soft sounds. My general purpose is here. Now when I play the instrument, again, keeping the line from the elbow to the tambourine's end here, I actually want to play directly across. I don't want to play here and I don't want to play here because that's going to bring me off axis. Instead, if I play here, I can react a little bit more. I can react just a little bit more to this instrument. Sorry, I just needed to turn the volume down because I know it's about to get loud playing this tambourine. So I want to play on the opposite side of where I'm holding. And I want to play so that the instrument is at an angle. If I hold the instrument like this, I get excess resonance. If I hold the instrument like this, I get excess resonance. So the driest sound, the most simple sound I can make will be holding the instrument at about a 45 degree angle, give or take. Each tambourine is different. Some of them you hold more like this, some of them you hold more like this. And I'm going to hold it up so that I can play directly in front of me. Now when I'm playing in an orchestra or a band, I'll have the conductor straight in front and I'll hold the instrument so that the conductor can see it and so that the whole audience can hear it. I don't want to hide it behind a music stand. I don't want to play it low. I don't want to hide it from anybody. Instead, I want to play it so that everybody can see it and so that the sound is the clearest going out to the audience. Now beyond that, we're ready to play most of the tambourine repertoire. The only other thing we have to talk about are the rolls. So when we roll on the instrument, we have two options. A longer, more powerful, or a longer sustaining roll that has more power to it is gonna be a shake roll. And our shake roll is a combination of twisting our wrist like this and bending our wrist like this. Some people call it a figure eight, but that rolling technique will allow us to get the most sound possible. Now that sound is going to be able to continue as long as my arm doesn't give out. And a lot of times in longer roll sections on pieces of music, we need to be able to sustain it for a longer period of time. That's the shake roll we're gonna use. To practice this, practice first by twisting your wrist, then bending the wrist, then do a combination of the two. It kind of feels like um, my hand's doing a, a circle, a figure eight. But then I want to make sure that everything's really relaxed and I'll bring my wrist up and I'll roll the tambourine here. I don't roll in front of me and I don't roll below. I always roll above so that I can relax my wrist and allow that to move freely. Now the other roll type is going to be utilizing our fingers and our thumb. These rolls are quicker, they're softer, they're um, you know, easier to transition between um, playing single notes and rolling. And the way that we do this, number one, make sure that you have beeswax on the tambourine, some sort of friction that you can press against and have it bounce off the, off the skin. And then you wanna secure your finger. So I use my middle finger and I press my thumb down just behind the first joint so that the tip of the finger can wiggle freely and then as I'm pressing my thumb I relax my middle finger and I just press it against the edge. You'll notice that my hand is traveling around the edge. I'm not pulling it. I'm not pulling it this way. I'm traveling in line. That gives me more of a chance to allow the friction to respond correctly. By traveling along the head. Now some people will lick their finger, they'll moisten their finger with a sponge. I've found that with a good amount of beeswax, I don't have to do either. 
But if you need to, maybe consider getting a sponge or a small cup of water to dampen your finger a little bit, wipe off the excess moisture, and give it a try. The other option is using the thumb. Now when I use the thumb, I, I, I brace my thumb at the base of the thumb. So I press down, and then I allow this to, again, travel freely in line with the edge of the tambourine. So this is a thumb roll. This is a finger roll. Beyond that, we have our normal playing with the duck beat. We have our shake roll for louder, longer, sustained passages. Then we have our finger roll for quicker rolls, softer rolls, things that need quick transitions. Beyond that, you don't have much more to worry about with tambourines. There's not too much to worry about. There is a way to play faster with our hand and knee, but we'll talk, cover that in another video. This will get you through, again, 99% of the music you have to play. Just make sure that you're playing in a way that's relaxed, with good posture, and that the instrument can be seen so that it can be heard well in front of the ensemble. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.